Hi, this video looks at the uh, experience curve um, and it's part of this section of three point, unit 3.9 here uh, where we're looking at issues to do with growth. So what is uh, the experience curve? Well, um, it's argued that the experience curve occurs when an organisation experiences lower average production costs as a result of their cumulative output. So cumulative output, their total output over uh, time, the number of units that they've ever produced leads to lower average costs. So it looks like this where we've got the average cost on this axis and it falls um, the total, the more the total cumulative output, the more an organisation has produced uh, over time the uh, greater the fall in average cost. So why might that occur? Well, first of all, <coughs> the uh, organization refines its production process uh, over the more units of output that they produce so that they're going to become more efficient. Okay, they, you know, the, the more that they produce units of output, the more they can have opportunities to spot, identify problems and iron out any issues in the production process. Um, there's also an argument that the worker skill level is going to increase the more units of output that are produced. I'm a big fan of getting students to practice um, exams and exam technique and different questions. The more you practice, the more you understand how to answer those questions and it's the same in producing units of output the more number of output units of output i produce whatever it is cups of coffee or um, building sofas or whatever it is the better that i am going to get at that the more that i do it and therefore i become more efficient and average costs are driven down and we've got the power of corporate learning group memory and experience so you know maybe um uh, you know, two, three years ago when we were producing so many units of output, we experienced a similar problem to the one we're experiencing today. Now, maybe there's an issue with suppliers or something. Well, how did we resolve that situation then? And can we implement that uh, solution a lot quicker today so that we're back online and producing and we, we lose less units of output? So this, this ex group experience... Um, uh, that as a result of producing more units of output leads to more efficient solutions being found to problems and hopefully drives down average costs. So what are the implications of this? Well, there are going to be cost benefits to us of, of achieving increased market share that aren't just related to economies of scale. So it's going to be important for us to uh, increase our market share to benefit from average costs. And if we can do that, our expertise, our experience of uh, producing more units of output lowers our production costs and become, becomes a barrier to entry. It becomes a less attractive market for new businesses to enter. They look at uh, the existing organisation and they, they think, well, they've produced loads of units of output. They're real experts. They, they've got lower production costs than we could possibly uh, compete with, so we're not going to enter this market. Um, and... Um, also, you know, the implication of this is that it's not, it's not time that is the key factor here. It's cumulative output. And, you know, th therefore, fast expansion can be beneficial. The more quickly uh, we get these units of output out, that's going to lower our average cost. It's not time that's the key variable here. It's... Um, it's actually the, the quantity of output that we've produced. So fast expansion can be very beneficial. Maybe that may even be through external growth where we're uh, merging with another business and gaining their corporate learning and experience. So um, does this always hold true? Can we question this? Well, the research is based on, um, uh, the, the theory is based on research by the Boston Consultancy Group, the same people that came up with the uh, Boston Matrix, and they were researching kind of semiconductors, electronics. Is that going to apply to all industries? Um, you know, does it apply in uh, uh, tourism industries? Does it apply in service industries? Does it apply in agriculture? Um, so we could question that. 
uh, the theory also assumes that experience leads to greater expertise. Okay, that's not necessarily always the case. It's only far more beneficial to a student rather than doing, you know, 50 past papers at home on their own. Maybe it's going to be beneficial if they get some feedback from somebody else on their answers before they, they try and go back. Okay, you know, I always think of driving, like, just because I've driven for... 10 years doesn't necessarily make me a good driver. In fact, it might make me a worse driver because I'm picking up bad habits and no one's correcting me. So um, this uh, assumption that just producing more over time leads to better result needs to be questioned. Um, we're ignoring the, the uh, possible impact of diseconomies of scale. So the more output we produce, we, we might experience diseconomies of scale. Um, and there's the potential for complacency as well. Um, you know, particularly if we're a monopoly, we've got you know market, uh, big market share. Could that lead to complacency and therefore actually uh, higher average costs? And there's an argument that technological uh, developments uh, occur very quickly, and. Uh, perhaps these are going to lead to greater cost advantages. You know, it's all very well having experience on an old method of producing, but if a new whizzy machine comes along and uh, can produce four times as many units as, um, uh, you know, as a, an experienced worker, well, how good is that experience then? So we could question the experience curve if we needed to.